All right, so we're starting our first assignment, which is bullet um, dynamic system. And essentially we have uh, this building here and it's made up of a bunch of tiny little pieces. Each one of these things here is a cube and then these bigger pieces are just a cylinder. And we've just kept it very simple uh, for the first one. Um, and then you'll see I have these spheres over on this side. And what's gonna happen is the building sits here and as I hit the play button, Boom. So imagine having to try to animate, you know, every single one of these um, individual pieces here. Um, it would take a long time to make, to make, you know, even animate a handful of these, let alone, you know, I have a couple thousand pieces here, I think. Um, and then making sure they all interact with each other correctly and they're not intersecting. Like if I zoom in on these, you can see that they're just kind of like touching each other. Um, there shouldn't be any really kind of going through them. Once in a while you'll get some that do. Um, sometimes it's, you know, depending on the scene you'll get more or less or whatever. Now I'm scrubbing, which is this act of clicking and dragging in the timeline. Uh, because I, this is a finished product setup, this isn't a beginning part, okay? For everything dynamic that we do, we have to make sure that we hit the, we rewind it to the beginning and then hit the play button and let it calculate each one of those. Okay, and the cool thing about this too is that before you know I kind of lock this in, I really could change this animation just by moving the ball. I could just take this ball and move it down and then have it hit somewhere else and then that would create a different animation because the ball would hit differently and um, make other cool stuff happen. Okay, So this is going to be our first introduction really to what dynamics are and, and how we can apply them. Um, into this into a scene okay and we're like I said we're doing it very simply just plain objects okay so I'm just gonna save my scene I'm gonna go to a new file and I'm gonna set my create a project so I'm gonna go to file project window I'm gonna make a new one uh, make sure you put it on your D drive I'm gonna go into my D drive 25 oops, this should be 50 and I'm going to put it inside my work folder. And this is going to be um, Sarcona Kona, uh, Bullet 01. Okay, that way I know it's my first bullet project. Hit accept. And here we go. Okay. Now, like I said, we have to make sure that we always hit play. And we also have to make sure that in their animation preferences, this little button down here that we have our playback speed set to play every frame. We cannot have it set to real time up here because it'll give us errors. So this is always set to play every frame. Every single dynamics thing we do is play every frame here. Always leave that to play every frame, never ever change it to anything else. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to create a ground plane. So polygon plane, everything has to be polygon for this to work, okay? And I'm just making it big. I'm just scaling it up, making it huge, okay? Um, in the the dynamics of nowadays, um, it really helps to kind of get everything in a real world scale. So if you're thinking of these units here, this is actually centimeters. So if I went to my calculator and I went to 3400 divided by 2.54, which is how many centimeters are in an inch, that would give me 1,338 inches. And if I divide that by 12, that gives me 111 feet. Obviously, that's like a huge you know gap here, 111 feet from spot to spot, all right? But it just gives me enough room to kind of play around in. Uh, so now let's create a cube. You can create any kind of shape, okay? Um, the stuff that I'm going through, look at the process of it and then figure out how you want to apply it, all right? So in this case, I'm using a cube just because a cube, as far as dynamics go, it only has eight points on this whole cube. So it's much simpler than let's say a sphere. Look how many points there are in a sphere that Maya would have to calculate and try to figure out how it's colliding with all of these. Cube is much simpler, okay? All right, now I need to make sure this cube is perfectly seated on the ground. So if I um, just kind of eyeball it, it's not gonna be good enough, all right? I want it to be seated perfectly on the ground. Well, here's a little trick. Whatever the Y scale is, I just take the transit Y and just cut it in half, okay? So if I take my Y scale and I make it like 22 or 20, two, I make this 11, you'll see how it's seated perfectly on the ground, okay? So whatever number that is, 
Um, I'm just going to make sure it's there. So I don't like that being so high. So maybe uh, no, six is probably good. Uh, and then we'll go to what's half of six. It's three. There we go. Okay. So now this is six centimeters big. So if you wanted to do the math on this, six divided by 2.54. So it's about two and a half inch block. That's what we're looking at here. And I'll even make um, these a little bit thicker this way. I'll make each one of these 2.54. Okay. So now I have a one inch by one inch block by roughly um, two and a bit. Okay. So I'm just going to take this and scoot it over here. Now remember, this was a building. You know, how big is a building? You'd have to kind of figure all that, all that junk out. Okay, so here is this first block. And I put it over here at the edge. Uh, I could eyeball it or, or type in these numbers. There we go. So that's exactly there, but um, I just have it kind of sitting at the edge of this grid. Like I said, it doesn't really matter how accurate this part is. It's more how accurate this part is. So I'm going to um, duplicate this. So I hit Control-D. And now what I want to do is I want to move it over and rotate it perfectly. Okay? Well, it's hard to do it just like that. You know, it's I can't really get it perfect like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that guy. Now what would make this easier, let me um, switch my view to this that it's easier for you to see <clears throat> what would be easier if I could take this pivot and put the pivot right here at the origin and then I could just kind of rotate this whole thing around okay so I'm gonna hold down the letter D hold down the letter X and I'm gonna move this over to the origin so now you see the pivot is right here okay so now if I were to go and grab this and duplicate it and rotate it around I'm going to look at the gap between these, okay? Because this is dynamic, um, if I have these things like this and they're intersecting, it's going to freak out, okay? So I have to just rotate it until they're not touching, okay? Now I could even switch to the top view and just punch in some numbers here. So right now it's at negative 16. What if I put it to negative 14, negative 12, okay? Negative 12, you see right there it's overlapping even though it's a little bit it's still too much okay so negative 13 is probably a good number now if I'm going to duplicate this and I'm just going to do it so you can see it I'm gonna hit shift uh, hold down shift and hit D okay I didn't do anything so I'm just gonna type in negative 26 which is double that and then hold down shift and hit D as I duplicate this going all the way around you'll see that as I get back to the beginning it overlaps okay so I'm just going to undo, undo, undo until I'm looking down here until it says undo duplicate. All right. So I'm going to redo my duplicate and I'm going to realize that, okay, well at 13, negative 13, it didn't work. Why didn't that work? Well, if we take a circle or a yeah, circle shape, which is 360 degrees, we're rotating it 13 degrees. I just divide it, you'll see that it comes up with an odd number, 27.69 things, okay? So uh, what I can do is I can say, okay, well, obviously that's not going to work. But what if I just took 360 and I divided it by 27? Okay, that'll give me 13.333 units. So if I rotated this negative 13.333 units, then I would get pretty much an even number. But I'm going to try to find something that's a little bit um, simpler to do. So if I take 360 and I divide it by um, 12, we can't do. If I divide it by 16, you'll see we're pretty close, 22.5. That's a happy number, okay? I could even do it by 14, but it gives me a weird number. I could do it by 15. Oh, look at that, 15 is right at 24, okay? So even number, there's no decimal points, there's no rounding here. So if I rotate this negative 15, rotating it to negative 15, um, and then I hit shift D a bunch of times. You'll see that it ends up perfectly spacing all of these uh, items. Now, is it going to be critical? Yeah, it is. <laughs> Our animation will still work, uh, but we want to make sure that it looks nice. You know, you don't want to do this thing, spend a lot of time kind of setting this up, only to find out that it looks like junk. Okay? 
So you want to make it as nice as possible. Now I'm going to show one more way to kind of do this process a bit simpler. Okay. So the first thing we always do is we take this cube, we put the pivot here, or object, whatever it is, cube, cylinder, sphere. I duplicate it and I rotate it and try to figure out what that value is. Sometimes it's going to be like 4 degrees, sometimes it's going to be whatever. Okay, so we figured out that negative 15 was our magic number. Okay, and we know that 15 goes into 360 24 times. So if I go to edit, duplicate special option box, we can use this window to punch in our um, degrees right here. So we can say, okay, well, we're rotating this in the y direction, this is the middle one is. Um, 15, negative 15 doesn't matter, it's the same, you know, around this way, around that way. And then how many copies? 23. Now where did I get 23 from? Because we had 24. Well, we already have one there, so we don't need to duplicate it for that one. Okay, so we just take whatever number, 360 divided by 15, and that gives us 24, just subtract 1. So 15 in the Y, 23 here, duplicate special, and there we go. Okay. So very handy to uh, be able to use something like that. Alright, so now there's our block. And we can still change... We can still modify the si shapes of these afterwards. Um, you know, I could still scale these up this way. Um, I could scale them in that way um, if I needed to. Uh, but it's, it's best to kind of get that shape at the beginning. Um, and if you realize, you know what, I'm not really happy with the way this is turning out. Well, all we have to do is just hit undo a couple times. Resize this one. And then re-duplicate special it again. And there we go. Okay. So now that we have this base, we need to put a topper on it. So I'm going to create a uh, cylinder. And the cool thing in 2015 is this little guy here. Um, I can scale it. You know, just the width and height, the X and Z, but not the Y. It's kind of neat. It's not kind of neat, it's incredibly neat. Let's take this, put 60 divisions. Um, I'll leave the cap on. And again, this is something I need to make sure is perfectly lined up with the top of that. Okay? So here's a quick way to do that. If I grab this guy, I shift click that guy. Uh, one of our hotkeys that we had set up before. Uh, y max. Mm -hmm. Oops, wrong one. I have to grab this first, then that, and then go to Y max. Uh, y min. Maybe not. No, Y stack. There we go. One of those buttons would do it. Y stack. Uh, which we also have the hotkey set up for. There we go. Alt F. And Y stack. Okay, so I'll just stack that right on top of that. All right, so it's a very handy uh, tool. And if I resize it, and just grab that again. Y stack. There we go. And go a little bit more out that way. I like to have a little bit of a gap, uh, or a little bit of overhang on this. All right. So now that we have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the whole group, not the ground. Okay, just those pieces there. And if you have trouble, do it from the front view. Marquee straight across, but just make sure when you go into perspective that they are all selected. Sometimes you'll not select one or two of them just because they're too far away from the camera. All right, so now I have this. So I'm just going to group it, Control G. I'm going to duplicate it, Control D, and I'm going to bring it up. Now, how far am I bringing this up? Well, this I I can't type in a number here. Okay, um, I'm going to use my snapping to do that. So as I drag this upwards like this. Uh, I'm going to hit the V and then drag this down. And you'll see that it snaps right to the top of that. So I hold V and just drag this arrow and it'll snap right to that um, vertex. So then I can hold down Shift and duplicate it. I uh, didn't do it. Okay. So I'm just going to hit Undo because it's much easier when this just works to do that. So I just made sure I went back to where it says Undo Duplicate. Duplicate again. Hold down V. There we go. Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, Shift D, until I get my tower as big as I want my tower to be. Okay, you don't want to make it too big. If I went crazy like this, well, it's hard to film something like that. Look how far away I have to be to get that into the shot. So moderately big. Let's say that. 
Okay, I can still get you know pretty close in there. If I decide to delete something, I can just marquee and delete those also. And just have a smaller building. And for this lecture, I'm going to keep it as a smaller building just so it goes a bit quicker. Okay, so if I look over here at my um, display, heads up display poly count, I can see that my triangles are about 6,000. Okay, I don't have millions and millions and millions of things here, um, but it can very quickly get up to those huge numbers. All right. So now before we make this a dynamic object, if I hit play right now, just so you can see, it's not dynamic, it's not doing anything. I have to do a little housekeeping on this. My pivots for these cubes are at the center. Okay. So the bullet doesn't like that. The bullet wants the pivots to be right at the center of each object. So I'm just going to grab all these, go to one of my hotkeys, Alt-D, and go to center pivot. There we go. I'm also going to um, freeze the transform. So modify freeze transform option box. Now I can't freeze the translates or rotates. I have to keep these exactly as they are. Okay. But I'm going to do the scale. Freeze transform. Okay. That way the scales are set to one. So it'll automatically look at the scales exactly as they are. Um, I also need to go into my outliner just so you can see. And all these things are inside groups. Okay, so if I open up group 11 and I open up group 10, you'll see that the number one object in group 10 is P cube 1. The number one object in group 11 is P cube 1. Well, they all don't have um, individual names. They all have, a, you know, the same name. So I'm going to grab all my objects like that. Now I'm going to hold down shift and just hit P. Okay, and what that does, if I go back to my outliner and I have it in my box here, uh, you'll see that it unparents all those things and gives them all unique individual names. That's exactly what I want. All right. So that's cool. Perfect. Um, all right. So now I can make this into a bullet object. I'm just going to verify. Yep. The pivots are there. Good. So I'm going to grab all these, not the ground, just my building. I'm going to go under bullet and I can make a, an active body, um, out of these like this, but what happens is it makes individual pieces. And I want Bullet to treat this as one single building with a bunch of individual pieces. So I'm going to go to Create Rigid Set. And I'm going to call it BLD Building. And just hit Apply. Now if you get an error down here, make sure you read the error. You know, sometimes it'll say, you know, more than one object matches that name. Then you didn't ungroup stuff. Or, you know, you might not get an error, but it still might not work. So just keep watching it, okay? Um, I should also, I'm going to hit Undo. I like to make sure I save this before I make it a uh, bullet object. So I'll make it bullet 01. I'll go back to create the rigid set with just those pieces selected. Hit apply. Oops. And you see I get an error, my command error. Uh, no idea what that error is. Let me reselect. Hit apply. Same error. Let me rename this. There we go. I didn't like having the same name that I just created, so big deal, I changed it. I'll save my scene as, let's call this bullet 02. Okay, so now if I rewind, hit uh, wireframe so I can see it, and hit play, you'll see that my building is just falling. Okay, so what I have to do is get my building so that it doesn't fall by giving it a ground. Ground would stop it from falling. So I'm going to grab the ground, go to bullet, now I'm going to create a passive rigid body. Passive means that it doesn't do anything. Active means that it does do stuff. Uh, are you an active person or a passive person? I'm active, so I move around. I'm passive, so I just stand still. So we're going to create a passive thing that just stands still. Uh, we go to the option box. I always go to the option box for a lot of these tools. And we have to tell it what kind of shape this is. This is a plane. And we're going to make this static. Okay? And we just hit apply. And then we rewind again, and then we hit play, and you'll see that our building just kind of it flexes a little bit. If I rewind it and hit play, you'll see that it's flexing a little bit. It may even fall over, okay? If your building explodes and just goes crazy, you may have done something wrong. You may have like copies of your stuff inside there. So I need to modify um, this shape, okay? So if I go to the attribute editor for this, You'll see that I don't really get anything any bullet um, options inside here. I have to go to bullet and say select the solver and then go to the attribute editor 
And then here's my building's initial state. Um, and it's actually going to be a little confusing because I have two in here. Let me just delete this other one. There we go. Remember I created one and I undid it. Sometimes it just doesn't undo everything. So I'm just going to delete that first one. There we go. So now I have building two, uh, which is the correct one. All right. So in building two, I'm going to say my collision shape box under the collision attributes is going to be set to hull. That means just trying to figure out what shape this is and make a shape around it. And then my margin for coll uh, collision shape margin is zero. So now I rewind. I hit play. You see we still get our flexing a little bit. All right, I don't really want the flexing. I want this to just be kind of like s just sitting there at the beginning. All right, so I'm going to say initially sleeping. And that means that as I hit play, oops, I rewind it first, and I hit play, you'll see that the building doesn't move at all. It's not going to move until something hits it, and then it'll move. All right. There's also some rigid attributes here, um, default mass, linear damping, we'll, we'll play with all those. Okay, uh, I also want to go to my, well we'll get to that. Uh, I'm going to go to create an object that's going to collide with it. And spheres are just, you know, I love to use spheres for this. And I'm going to move it back. Okay, now I moved it in the negative z direction, so you see my z is in a negative. Um, and the reason I did that is that way when I animate this, um, I can launch it basically in the positive z direction. It's easier to type the negative numbers. So I'm going to make this an active body so that it moves. Okay, the ground is a passive, it's static, it doesn't move. But the ball here is going to be active, it's going to launch itself. So we're going to change the collision shape to sphere. We're going to make sure it's dynamic, which it is. And we're going to apply. We're going to rewind, and we're going to hit play. Now you'll see that the ball just falls. Okay, we have to give this some propulsion to kind of shoot at this thing. So over here under the bullet rigid body shape for the ball, there's an initial velocity, x, y, and z. So like I said, in the z direction, I could put in like 100 and launch this thing 100 units in the z direction. So I rewind, hit play, and you'll see that the ball now moves in the z. And when it hits the building, stuff falls down. Okay. So now this is where it gets fun. It's set up. Our object here is active and just waiting for something to hit it. Our ground is static, and our ball is active, launching at this thing. So you'll see the first time that I hit play, it launched and hit the bottom-ish. Okay? Yeah, it looks nice. Uh, but let's say we want it to go a little bit higher. So I can actually give it a little bit of movement in the Y direction. Let's say 30 units. And hit play. And you'll see that now we have a little arc to it. It's going to actually miss it. <laughs> so let's set this up to maybe 10 in the Y. Rewind it. Hit play. Okay, now we're hitting a bit hard, uh, higher. And actually, you can see it like shot that disc right out. <laughs> and left uh, the building pretty much standing. Which is part of the fun of dynamics. And then, of course, we give ourselves a little bit more time. Let's say 250. I just want to see, is this going to fall? No, it's hilarious. <laughs> it just stands there. Uh, a good opportunity, too, for, you know, some comedic stuff. You know, it hits this building and just kind of topples it, uh, or, you know, knocks the middle out, and then you have other balls come in there and knock it down. Now, I can also play with, apart from the speeds that it's going, um, I can make sure it's rewound to the beginning, and then I can move it. So if I nudge this up a little bit, now it's going to hit in a different spot, and give me a different result. So you see here, uh, it actually knocked two of these out, and now we have three bricks standing up. It typically doesn't happen. I think it's just the luck of uh, the first day lecture. Okay, now we could also move it to the side. So if I shift this over to the side, hoping that I didn't move it too far over that it misses it. Nope, there we go. There we go. So now it hits it, and now it's going to topple over. Okay. So we can play with some other stuff as well. Uh, I can play with, if I grab the sphere and go to this, I can play with its mass. Okay, the heavier an object is, the more interaction it's going to have with that. So 100 is what I cranked it up to. It was 10. 
Okay, it's not going to move any different here, but when it hits, boom, look at that. It just launches those pieces out. I could even scale this up. And really see this uh, kind of movement of all these pieces. Okay, now there's one thing that, you know, it looks like it's a pretty accurate solve. I'm not seeing any collisions uh, or as far as uh, intersections. Um, but I like to go to the solver, bullet, select solver, attribute editor, and change this internal fixed frame rate to 240 hertz. It's just a more accurate solve is what that is. There's also gravity here. So if I realize that, hey, my objects are falling just a bit too slow, I can probably pump up the gravity some, so negative 30. You'll see that the ball is going to hit the ground and actually start rolling and then hit our building. Okay, so it's really now is the, the time of, of playing where you're looking at these things and trying to figure out what do you actually want to happen in here. Do you want the ball to just launch at it and destroy it? Do you want to roll into it and kind of collapse it? I could really make this, you know, uh, let's make, take the in, initial velocity of this in the z direction of 400 and we'll take the y up to, let's say, 30. Boom. So you can see, just by adjusting some of these numbers, that I've really kind of catapulted this animation into two so totally different things. The first one, it bounced, rolled, hit it, tumbled over. This one is just destroying it, okay? I'm going to take that down to maybe 200. Okay, and I got somewhere, you know, in between. Maybe the Y is a little bit too much. Let's take that down a little bit. Okay, and every time I'm stopping it, rewinding it, and then adjusting some settings, and then playing again. Okay, so now I'm just going to play with this until I get something that I'm happy with. All right, I could even, uh, I don't duplicate this sphere. It's recommended you always just make a new sphere or object or whatever it is. And then uh, add bullet to this guy. So active, sphere, dynamic, should all be set up. And then just give him a little bit of initial velocity. Oops. And if I don't want this one to come in yet, I'm just going to push him back further. Okay, that way it takes him longer to get over there. And look at that little sphere. It comes in and knocks one of the bricks. And then, <laughs> after he's knocked that brick, boom, here comes this guy to knock the rest of it. Okay, so you can really kind of play with this and get different results um, based on how you just have all these all these things kind of set up. You're like, oh, it's kind of boring. Whoa, what's that? Boom. And we could even have this launch a little bit higher, maybe like 50. Just want to make sure it doesn't go too far over it. Nope, we're good. So now it's going to hit that. Boring. Where's the action? And then here comes this guy. Boom. And he just hits it and just destroys that part of it. Okay? Alright, so let's pretend that this is all set. Alright, so I'm happy with the way this is looking. I could also give this some spin. It's kind of boring that it's not spinning. Um, so this is going to rotate in the X direction. So I'm going to go over to initial X direction rotation and put in, let's say, 100. And now you see that it's rolling on its way there, which just makes it a little bit more exciting. I'm going to shrink it down a bit. So we just scale that guy down a little bit, and it'll give us a different result. There we go. So you see how it kind of like takes out that bottom and these fall down? All right, and we can add in, you know, 30 more of these little balls kind of hitting it. Um, I could also take down its mass to 0.1 and what would happen here is that because this mass is so much greater than that mass that it should just kind of hit that ball or that board and kind of bounce off and then a second later here comes this guy knocking it down. There we go. I'm going to increase the gravity just a little bit more. 
negative 40. Now it's negative because that means gravity is going down, right? It's not uh, going up. If I set this to 40, positive, gravity would go upwards. Okay, so that means this ball is going to fall down sooner. This ball is going to fall down sooner. There we go. And let's make sure this ball has just a little bit more movement in the y direction. Because I want it to give really, I want it to really hit the middle of it. This one I'm not too concerned about. There we go, just like that. Okay, so everything's kind of coming to rest. Uh, probably around that 240 mark ish or so. Alright, so that's good. So I'm happy with the way everything in this has turned out. It's wonderful, beautiful. Let me save this as number three. Alright, and then let me go to um, grab all these pieces here. And I'm going to go to pipeline, alimbic, export all. I didn't need to select everything, I could just export it all. I'm going to export everything here. So I'm going to say export it all. It's going to go into my Sarcona Bullet Cache Alembic folder. And I'm going to say it building fall down. Okay, so what this does is it writes out actually to the hard drive all that information, all the uh, dynamic stuff that was happening. Okay, so now I won't be able to change anything after the fact. Uh, but what I will be able to do is scrub in the timeline and really kind of set this up uh, much quicker. So I'm saving, um, I'm going to a new scene, and I'm just going to go to that pipeline again, Alembic, and import that scene into this blank file. And you'll see, here's all my stuff. Nothing's changed. Okay, I still have my building. I still have, where are the spheres at? There's one. There's the other one. Okay. I do have these extra cameras. This is my top view. I can delete that. If I go in the outliner... Here's my side and perspective, I can delete that. Here's a front, I can delete that. Okay, um, that's all my pieces here. Now I do have a bunch of other stuff that's inside here. Um, here's my solved piece there. There's my first one solved, I don't need that. Just doing a little bit of maintenance on this scene. Here's a bunch of blank groups. And then this is all my original geometry. I don't need any of this original geometry. Okay, I stopped at the plane because that's my ground. So I have the BLD2 solved, which is my bullet. I have my plane. I have my sphere back there. And my sphere right there. All right. So now I can click and drag inside this and I can see everything happening. Oops. And I think I was at 240 is when everything happens. Okay. So now my bullet's done. So now I can go through and, and set up this workflow or this uh, camera and render out all the stuff. Okay, really simple to do. You know, once you have all the all the nuts and bolts done. So, so for every scene you do in this class, there should be um, the linear workflow set up on it. Um, that way, it looks nice. So we're just going to go through. Um, that process in um, the next video of just setting all that stuff up um, or the next section uh, but I want to go through and set up the cameras before I do that so I'm gonna make a new camera panels perspective new and think of this like you're telling a story okay so I'm gonna set my focal length of this camera 50 Uh, turn on this blue circle here. Uh, view, camera, settings, fill. Oop. View, camera, settings, vertical. There we go. And I'm just going to click and drag and see. Okay, Here's a good shot. Look at this. The ball comes in and just kind of plunks it. That's all I really want for this camera shot is just that. Okay. So that's kind of a neat camera view. So I'm just going to hit S to set a key on it. Sets a key on that. Go to a new camera. Oops, let me name this one first. 
uh, startup cam or camera zero one. Make a new camera. I'm gonna set the same 55 millimeters, blue circle, camera settings vertical. Now when I get that little plunk right there, there he is. Now I'm getting it all from the same side. I don't want to switch to this side because that would just be confusing. I'm staying on this side of it. Okay. So this will be camera two, so I'll set a key on this. Maybe I'll even angle that down a little bit more like that. And then set a key. Another new camera. And this camera, um, I'm going to show it from behind. So I think it's kind of like a cool view. Uh, blue circle on. Vertical. Let's change our film focal length. Okay, so right about here. Let's see. Boom. So I want to really capture that, you know, at the camera. Okay, I don't want to be up here, so it's not at the camera. I want to be in the action of it. Like that. There we go. Let's actually be camera um, four here. I'm going to still set up camera three, because i got to show that ball coming at it. Circle, vertical, there we go. There we go, perfect. That's me. Camera zero three. All right, so that's camera three, and then camera four is this. Boom. And then I don't think I need a new camera, like a camera five. Just kind of show the damage. I think that final one kind of seals the deal on it. Yeah, I think that's good. That, that's a good enough story right there, just kind of show that destruction. All right. So now that I have my camera set up, let me save this scene as. I'm going to call this bullet imported. Maybe I can differentiate it between, uh, you know, the actual bullet here because this is none of this is editable as far as what's happening dynamically. I can't take this and move this sphere around. Uh, I can't take this and move, you know, I can move it, but it's not doing anything as far as dynamically. If I were to take this and just scoot it over, you'll see that that animation happens still, okay? Because it's all being basically it's locked in, it's baked into it. Um, I can do some other stuff just so you can see there is some, you know, here's the Alembic cache, this file that's reading. I could change the speed of it. So if I want this to go faster, five, I could speed this up. So now the entire thing's done by frame 60. That's only two seconds. Though, so. uh, you can slow it down too, but it's not very accurate. When it gets into... You know, the actual collision of these objects here. Um, some of them may actually start going between each other. Um, so you just be aware of that, okay? Sometimes you can get away with it, uh, but you just got to, like I said, just be aware and just kind of go through and, and check stuff out. So I'm going to leave it at 1. Set this back to 240. And 240. There we go. Okay, and we'll save, and there we go. Alright, so now we're going to do the um, linear workflow. So we're going to go into our render settings, and these settings are going to be universal. Okay, so this is like the first start of this. The first thing we got to do is change this to mental ray. Mental ray is not listed here. Windows, settings, preferences, plugin manager. And then we find Maya 2 MR right here, loaded, auto-loaded, then it should show up. Okay, so mental ray, 
we enable this check that turns on color work or uh, color management. We're going to change these to open EXRs. We're going to change this to RLE. This is eventually going to be named at number that extension, so we we'll just change that anyway. It's all good there. We're going to go to uh, that's nothing there, but done there. So we're going to go to our render view, which is this little blue thing. So the one with the blue banner. We're going to go to display, color management, change the image color profile number one to linear. And essentially we're set up. That's it. Okay. Now we do have to do some extra stuff uh, as we start creating materials and as we start creating um, uh, lights and all that. Uh, but we'll see that in a second. So let's first add a material to this. So we'll go to lighting and shading, assign new material, and for everything that you should be shading, it should be a Mia material X passes. Okay, that should be your go-to shader. Call this building Mia. And presets, we'll start off with something, let's say matte plastic. There we go, okay. So now just so you can see, I'm gonna render this. And if we look at this color here and that color there, they don't look like they're the same color. Okay, that's where the linear workflow comes in, um, where we have to adjust our coloring. So I'm going to click on, first I'll click on this color just so it loads it into my swatches. Then I'm going to click on the map, go to utilities, and in utilities I'm going to search for gamma. I'm going to change each one of these gammas to 0 0.454, and then change the value to that color. And now if I render this again, you'll see that that color is now closer to the color we chose. This color here matches that. See how nice, how lovely. So let's go back. So anytime we do any coloring, we have to add a gamma to it and adjust it. Okay. I'm going to take some of this reflectivity down. I'm going to take this glossiness down. I'll take my samples to one. Um, I actually want this color to be a bit darker. I actually don't like that color. Let's go to blue. Okay, we'll render this again. There we go. It's a nice looking blue. Maybe a little bit lighter. Oops. I can do a little render region. Just marquee it and then hit the little render region button. Yeah, that looks nice. Uh, I'll grab the floor. Assign a new material. Uh, do, do, do Mia. Floor Mia. I'll do a matte finish. And I'm just going to make a light color here. I may darken the building. The floor is a little bit too light. Oops. I'm going to put my gamma on there. That's why it's so light, because I didn't put my gamma on there. there we go. It's a bit darker. Now, we don't have any lights in here, so that's going to change this, too. So right now, we're just kind of setting up the, the structure of it. And then here's my two spheres. There and there. So I'm just going to assign, for the sake of ease, I'm just going to assign the same material to both of those. So, spheres, Mia. We'll start off with glazed ceramic. And we'll give this a color. Now I've set up uh, for my gamma, I hate typing these things in. So I just basically set them once. And then under presets, I just saved that as a preset. So now I can just go here and replace it, and it'll automatically type those numbers in for me. So I'm going to give these guys a little bit more punch. Um, that. That might look good. And then let's take reflectivity down a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we jump this to about here. That way I can see everything together. And then I can render it and take a look at how these colors are inter interacting with each other.
I think I'm going to diffuse that a little bit more. That reflection is just too much. So I'm going to take this sphere. Knock that glossiness down. And what that's going to do is it's going to blur that reflection some. There we go. Okay, so now that we have that looking beautiful, um, let's save this. And then let's add in some lights. And typically we're going to stick with area lights. Okay, so just make an area light, scale it up. I'm going to hit the T key. You see I get two arrows. I'm going to grab the one that uh, allows this square to stay put and this other thing to be basically like a pointer. I'm just going to point it at the scene. Okay. Now I set up all my cameras from basically like this side here all the way through that. Okay. So I don't need to worry about what the lighting looks from here. From right here, right now, that lighting's going to look really dark. Okay, because there's no lights on this side. I don't care. I'm shooting it from this side. See? So, we're going to light it up over there. I just want you to understand that I'm not 100% concerned with what happens on that side. So, for this light, I'm going to turn on Use Light Shape. Take our high samples, the one. And you'll see how the lighting really affects this thing. It's not just, you know, just the shaders. That lighting really has a lot to do with it as well. Okay. And we're at about 12 seconds uh, a frame here to test this. I'm going to go to my options, test resolution, and set this down to 50%. So now when I render it, we should be a bit quicker. Okay. Now we're down to four seconds. Much easier to see the lighting uh, at a bigger one, but it's much easier to kind of you know, I see some quick renderings and having to wait. Alright, so we have one light here. I'm going to duplicate this. Just scoot this over here. Now we are lighting up this side, okay? Now this light, if we look at it right now, is, uh, that took seven seconds, it's basically like a solid light throughout this entire thing. It doesn't look natural, okay? A light should have a drop-off to it. So on the light, up here where it says decay, we're going to go to quadratic for both of these. And then now if I render it, you'll see there's nothing there. Okay, because once I set it to quadratic, this one is just way too um, way too low. So I'm going to set this to 5,000 for this guy. And I'll set this one to 10,000. It might be too bright. It might not be bright enough. We'll find out. There we go. So you can see it's actually not bright enough. And I'm just going to angle these a little bit differently. And let's take this guy here and set this to be 25,000. And I'm going to angle this up a little bit more, okay? The way the area lights work is it's this plane right here. So as it, this plane hits that, um, it's cutting the light off. So I just want to angle it a little bit more so I don't really see that thing there. I also don't want to have long shadows, okay? The lower this is, the longer my shadows are going to be. Okay, now as I bring it further away, I might have to crank up that light some more. See, it's dark now, so I'm just going to grab my light, and let's take this to 55,000 for this one, and 20,000 for that one. Okay, so you see that rendering took only three seconds, that's fine. Um, I'm still getting a bit of darkness in here, so what I'm going to do is go to my render settings, under my indirect lighting, and I'm going to turn on Final Gather. 50. 0.550. Now what this is going to do is it's going to incorporate some bounce light into this. Okay, so it's not as dark now in some of these areas. 
Okay, these shadows are still like crazy dark. And the reason those are crazy dark is because these lights are so tiny and so far away. So I'm just going to scale them up. And what that does is it makes my light source bigger, which spreads out that shadow more. See, so now we have a softer shadow down here. We have this lighting looking nice there. I think I might boost this light up just a smidge more to, let's say, 85,000. Take this guy up a little bit more to maybe 50,000. Just still seems a bit too dark in the scene, so I just want to make sure that it's plenty bright. There we go. That's much nicer. Much nicer. All right. That's good. I like that. All right, so let me just check it from my cameras. So I'm going to go to camera one, render it. Okay, it's a bit dark on this side, um, but I'm not too concerned with you know it being too dark right here. Um, I could take this light and duplicate it, and I hit T, and then I can just move this way over here. That way this gives me just a little bit of light kind of splashing on this side. Okay, so here's camera one again. Okay, so we have a little bit of light splashing there. That looks pretty nice. Now I'll switch to camera two. Probably about the same kind of lighting that we were just looking at, just a little bit more lightness on the right. Yep. And you see how long this is taking. This is 16 seconds for that. All right, let's switch to camera three. Oops, I actually switched to camera three in render it. All right, so there's camera three, that's good. Let's switch to camera four. And there's camera four. There's no weird lines in our in our view, which is what we want. Just play through until we get to a scene like that. And then take a rendering and take a look at it. There we go. So that looks pretty nice. Okay. Now there is grain in here, but again, our settings are turned down. Okay. They're not cranked up right now. All right. So our linear workflow is good. Everything's set up. Perfect. We're basically we're ready to render. So let's save this scene as ball imported, ready to render underscore zero five. Okay. Any kind of naming you do, never put spaces. Always do underscores. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go set something up and I'll be right back in any second. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this thing up to render. So I'm gonna go to my render settings. Uh, for now, this is good. Final gather setting there. Quality, let's take this quality up to um, two. Uh, motion blur would definitely help on this. Um, I just don't know how much motion blur we want. We can always test it out if we went to full. Cranked up some motion steps. I think camera through four is going to be our big one right there. And then I'm even going to take this to full res. Uh, render settings. And then I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, so now it's finished rendering, and you'll see that it took about ten and a half minutes to render that uh, that frame with motion blur. The motion blur looks nice. Uh, I might up the sample maybe just a little bit more. 
maybe 15. I'd probably do a couple more tests just to see. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's looking nice. You'll see that my um, sphere here, um, you can see a little bit of blockiness in here. So I want to make sure I hit 3 on that just to smooth it out. Uh, so I don't get these facets in there. Um, might take a little longer, but uh, if you want to render with motion blur, it'll definitely look nicer if you have the time. Um, you can kind of figure out, okay, this took about 10 minutes to render, um, and I'm rendering, say, 160 frames, okay? So 10 times 160 times 10 minutes a frame divided by 60 minutes. It would take about 26 hours to render that, okay? Now, I could also say, well, maybe I don't want... Um, motion blur in all of them because realistically you know this is the money shot here of that so maybe i only need to do one camera with motion blur so now we're looking at maybe 90 to 160 so that's about 70 frames so then you can maybe justify it then all right so first we'll just turn motion blur off for now but you could turn that on if you like i said wanted um wanted to have that all right so that's good all right, so now let's go to uh, our other camera here. There we go. Okay. So now we're setting this thing up. This should already be set up inside this. That's good. Quality is good. We'll get into passes in another lesson. And then under the common tab, we've set up the uh, color management. Our file name prefix, <clears throat> we're just going to leave it as is. Open EXR, RLEs name.number.extension uh, we're going to leave the start and end frame as they are we're going to leave the camera as it is and all this other stuff okay so we're going to close and we're going to save because we're rendering multiple cameras um, i don't want to do anything from here okay that's why i left all this stuff as default all right we're going to set it somewhere else so what i have is a file here called render my stuff dot bat Okay, so you can copy that file into your folder. I copied it right into my Sarcona bullet. I'm going to right click and go to edit with notepad plus plus. And then in here you'll see this big long line right there. Okay, so this is going to render our stuff out. So this first bit is where the renderer is, which is the mental ray renderer right there. Okay, I tell it the start frame. That's what the dash s means. Start frame is one. Dash e is the end frame. 65 dash cam is the camera so i type in my camera name dash im is the name of the image coming out okay so when it renders it, it's going to render it as camel one and then the project is my project folder so all you have to do in this is on your first line just go through and edit those fields okay this one stays the same that's fine so what's your start frame probably one what's your end frame so you go into maya not bad and you go to your camera one, you hit play or scrub until you get to the end of where you think you're good, okay? So I'm thinking probably about frame 65, I'm good. So I go into this and frame 65. Dash cam, I have to get the exact camera name. So when I came into Maya, I can go to the outliner, grab camera one, just double click, control C to copy it, control C or control V to paste it. This is just what I want it to be called. When it renders, it's going to call it Camel one For the project, I just went into my folder, clicked on the uh, address bar up here, and I just Control-C to copy that, and then I pasted inside of these little brackets. Okay, and then final image here, the final item is the name of the, fi the file. So if you go in your Scenes folder, there's my last one. Oops. So I just make sure I paste that name in there, and there we go. Okay. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to test it. So I just save this file. I go into the correct folder. There it is. I have a shortcut here I don't need. I'm just going to double click this. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up a window, and it's going to render my stuff in the window. Okay. So here it is rendering my stuff. So if it gets this far, that means I've done pretty good, okay? It hasn't gotten to anything crazy um, error-wise 
So that means that it found my file, it found my project, it knows where the start camera is, the start frame is, it knows where the end frame is, knows where the camera is. So now I can just close this because I know that that worked. And it'll give me an error. I don't care. All right. So now I'm gonna go back into this. I'm just gonna copy this line and paste it for however many cameras I have. I have four cameras, so I should have four lines. And now it's just a matter of going through and saying now my new start frame will be what? So I'm going to go to camera two. I want this to be at probably about 60 to let's say 93. 60 to 93. So 60 here, 93 there, camera 2, cam 2, and that's it. I don't do anything else. Then I go to my third camera. I want this to start at about 70, let's say 70, and go to about 100. So third camera, 70. 100, camera 3, cam 3. I'll switch to camera 4. Because I named them all you know, pretty much the same thing, just that last numbers digit uh, different, then it makes it much easier. So let's take this one at 90 to 160. And again, camera four, cam four. There we go. So then I just save. I'll go to my file again, double click it to render it. And then away it goes. Now what it's going to do is it's going to go through this, render camera one, then go through render camera two, then go through render camera three, then go through render camera four, and then it's done. If you did it the other way through Maya, through the render settings, you would either have to add all the cameras and render all the cameras from 1 to 160, or you just do this one at a time. So I'm going to go to camera 1, set up the start and end frame, render it out. Switch this to camera 2, start and end frame, render it out. Big hassle. This is so much easier. And as we get into some of these projects, you really want to be hitting them from different angles. You don't want to, you don't want to get stagnant where you're just like one camera boring, right? Um, so while this is rendering, I'm going to right click and go to Task Manager. And I'm going to check my Maya batch. You'll see that it's at 94, 97%. That's what I want. I'm going to right click, set priority below normal, change, close that, and put a render sign on my computer, save all my work, close my file, <clears throat> and away it goes. Now I can't close this window. If I close this window, it'll cancel my rendering, okay? So I want to leave this window up. Now once this is done, then we'll go through the process of um, putting all this together inside of Nuke. All right, so I'm just going to let this go and then we'll be back when we get to the Nuke part. All right, so here we are uh, in Nuke and all my things have rendered out. And I'm going to hit the play button. There we go. And there's my animation. Okay. Now I did do some tweaking to this um, to get it exactly the way I wanted it to look. Um, so you know, it's once you have the renderings, you can you can play with it from there and tweak some stuff. Okay. So um, I'm just gonna scoot this off to the side. So when you use Nuke, um, you want to use the one that says Nuke X. Okay. There's uh, several Nukes. Um, there's just Nuke 8, there's Nuke Personal Learning Edition, and then um, Nuke X. Okay, so we want to use Nuke X. You open it up, it's going to look, you know, like this, minus, you know, the picture I have in there. Um, and what we want to do is we want to bring in our files. So what we do is we are in this node graph, see so it says node graph here, we're down in this area, and we hit R. Okay, and now we go and find our file. So mine, we're on the desktop, in the D drive, Sarcona, 2550, da 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 images. So here are my four uh, videos that I took. If I have sequences unchecked, it'll let me bring in individual files, but I don't want that. And I want to bring in the sequence, so I just click on one, 
shift click on the next one okay um, now before you get into too much of you know, navigating stuff one thing to kind of note inside nuke is that the um, button clicking like typically you would double click to get in this folder in nuke you just single click and it takes you right into that folder okay so I'm gonna go here shift click that one that grabs all four of them I hit open um, so here are my videos down here and they come in as what are called nodes okay and I can just scoot them aside so they're not stacked on top of each other and if I look at these you can see this has one six seven and eight well this one's one and then six seven eight because I already have two three four five over there okay so yours will probably come in one two three four that's no big deal okay I can also look at the camera name cam one cam two cam three cam four and that works also if I want to see one of these and see what's inside this clip I click on it and hit the number one okay and then I can hit the play button here and that will allow me to see it okay so now I was just looping through that one clip if I want to see the next clip I click on it hit one and then hit play and then I can see it now one thing that you might have and sometimes this just gets changed is this uh, frame range this has to be set to input as we're reading stuff okay if it's set to global my frame range is set to 1 to 65 it's not going to hit this one at all okay so set that to input then hit play and now I can see what's inside that clip okay go to this one hit one this is set to input so it automatically adjusts my time range there we go go to the next one hit one hit play and depending on how complex your stuff is it might take longer or you know quicker to preview your stuff and it is a little bit dark we're gonna correct that also but for now we're doing good okay if it bothers you at this point where you really can't see it they have these um, sliders up here this one is the gain and then this one is the gamma so for what we're doing we could just kind of take the gamma up and that'll be good enough so we can see better of what's happening inside there it's not changing the footage it's basically just taking the gamma up on the entire uh, screen here so we can see that image better okay so now what we want to do is we have these pieces of footage I want to take them and I want to add um, a frame range or a uh, append clip right here to each one of those okay so the way I'm navigating back and forth alt and um, left clicking or right clicking I typically right click just because I'm used to that from Maya um, or actually it's middle click in Maya uh, alt and right clicking or alt and left clicking allows me to move back and forth alt and middle clicking and dragging allows me to zoom in and out okay and I can also use this guy down here to scoot around the board so I'm gonna add an append clip so I'm gonna click off into nowhere's land I'm gonna hit the tab key and I'm gonna type in append clip okay this append clip is also up here under the time append clip I could also click that okay now the way that nuke works is that we have these arrows and we connect these arrows to stuff that we want to be affected for instance if I hit tab and I add uh, what's called a grade node and I drag this arrow to let's say this guy okay right now let me just scoot this viewer over okay the viewer is what's connected so think of this like a this is a lake and then this is a little river going to another little lake okay so right now my viewer is connected to this lake so I'm only seeing this lake I want to see what this lake looks like so I have to click on that lake and hit one and now my viewer is connected to that okay so you can see how that viewer swaps between those to see what I'm actually viewing so if I go to this grade and I just double click it it pops open the settings here and I start playing with this you can see I can adjust those settings okay now if I switch back to this and hit one you see that that grade is gone all right so that's how nuke works is that we have these arrows connecting all of our stuff it's gonna take some time to get used to I'm not expecting you to become a master of this program in one assignment so what we're gonna do is we have four clips here we have one append clip I'm just going to add this to the first one come on there we go and so now this is going into that so here's one leg going into that 
Now I'm going to take this other arrow. It might be hard to see. There's a little arrow on the side of this. I'm going to drag that arrow to number two. And then another arrow pops out. I'm going to drag this arrow to number three. And then I'm going to drag this arrow to number four. So now what we have is we have four lakes all feeding their rivers into this other lake. That's the lake we want to see. If you think of a better analogy, uh, let me know. Well, lakes is what I got right now. So what this is going to do, this append clip, is if I click on this and hit 1, it's going to take this one and play it, then that one and play it, then this one and play it, then that one and play it. So now my input range is all the way to 201. So I'm just going to rewind and hit play. And we'll be able to see what that animation looks like based on that. So there it is, the whole animation playing out. Now there's some glitches inside here, okay, and we're going to point those out. It's not necessarily a glitch, it's just, you know, we have some overlapping frames here and it looks kind of weird, okay? Uh, here's the first one, I'm just going to click and drag my time slider. You'll see that this hits through the wall, okay, right here it's going through the wall. And then the next shot, it's not even broken through yet. And then it starts to break through, okay? So what I want to do is I want to um, stop this probably right about there, okay? So I want this to go boom, right about there, and then stop. I don't want it to go any further inside this animation, okay? So this clip here is clip three. I can check it by going one, two, three, okay? So I know that's a third clip. So here's clip three. What I can then add to this, I'm going to hit, um, sorry, I'm going to click on this so it's highlighted, <clears throat> then hit tab, and then go to frame range. Okay, now you'll see that because I had this click that automatically added this into that chain. So now we have this item going through this node, and then that going into here. All right, so I'm going to take this frame range, and I'm just going to change my end frame. That's all this is. Here's a start frame. Here's the end frame. I want this one to end sooner, so I just change my end frame. Let's say 90. Okay, I'm going to click and drag back. And see, I did, went too far, because now it's not even getting there. So let's change this to 95. There we go, yeah, perfect. Okay, see, it hits it right there. Now when we go to the next one, I want to start this one a little bit later, so it's already like being pushed out. Okay, this one introduced the the act that it's hitting it, and then that one's going to continue with that, okay? So I essentially want to get rid of the intro of this one. So again, I'll click on this piece, I'll hit tab, you'll see that frame range is already there, so I can just hit enter, and I'm just going to cut off some of the frames at the beginning. This one ended at 95, so I'm going to start this one at, oops, <laughs> let's go back to this, there we go. at 95. Come on, come on. There we go. Okay, so this one ended at 95, this one starts at 95. So now if we go through, we can see it hits. Okay, I think I would still like it to maybe start a frame later. So I'm going to go to this and say 96. Okay, and we'll see it in real time what it looks like. Okay. So that was one area that's pretty obvious what's happening here. So that transition from here to there looks much more natural. Now the other part that kind of bothered me, I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see it, same uh, keys here, just alt and middle click let me zoom in, is this ball comes in, it rolls in, it hits the thing, bounces, and then hits the ground. And then the next shot, it rolls up again and hits the ground again. Okay, so again, I just want to cut off those frames. Oops. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing. So again, this is which clip I have to figure out. So this is clip number one is here, that one's good. Clip number two, I want to cut off, okay? So I want this one to stop about there. So let's go to clip two, we'll hit tab go to frame range, and we'll just start cutting this off. So this will be frame you know, 80. Nope. It's still there, so it's not frame 80. 81. 
Oh, I went the wrong way. Uh, 75. There we go. Okay. So now it rolls in. Boom. Alright, maybe a little bit longer. I think it's cutting too quick there. Let's go to 78 here. So it goes here, up, and it starts to go back. So on this one, which is clip 3, I'm going to start this one at, this one ends at 78, so I'm going to start this one at 79. There we go. Okay. Okay, there's some flickering and other stuff that's happening, just ignore that. Alright, so now let's rewind this and play it again. Ignore the flickering, it's just loading that into the memory. When it plays back again, then we'll see it in real time. There we go. Beautiful. It's a nice little animation, nice little piece. Okay. So that's wonderful. So I'm just going to turn this gamma correct off, so we're back to our dark spot. I'm going to go to this append clip, hit the tab key, and go to grade. And grade is like your levels adjustment. So what I can do is I'm going to take a multiply in here, and I'm going to go to the uh, white point, and pull that back, and you can see how it just brightens it up a little bit. Okay, I can adjust the black, but it's going to be too dark. So I can just reset that back to zero. There we go. Okay, so now I'll rewind it again and play it through. This interface might seem odd and clunky to you, but just playing with it a few times, you really uh, start to understand you know, how to connect these things and where they need to be connected and how it works. And you really appreciate the um, beauty of it, really. Because one of the things I don't like about After Effects is, what if I want to see, you know, what does this frame range alone look like? I have to isolate clips and do all this other fancy work. All I have to do here is click on that frame range and hit 1. And now I can see just what that piece of footage looks like. Okay. Or I can go to this clip and preview the original one. Let me rewind it first. There we go. Okay, so in After Effects, it's a little bit more work to be able to do um, that kind of thing. Obviously, you have a timeline in After Effects where you can just, you know, scoot stuff down left and right. Um, but you'll really understand um, how this works once you get a little bit more comfortable with it. All right, beautiful. Okay, so now that we have this here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my grade hit tab, and I'm going to add in a write node. We read these files in, that's what the R did, okay, when we came over here and clicked R, that reads files. Uh, we do our work to those files, and then at the end of this, we write them out, okay? So then I'm going to go to my write node. I'm going to find a location for these. Okay, there's my 2550 folder. Uh, work, Sarcona Bullet, Images, and I'm going to make a brand new folder in here and call this Out From Nuke. Okay, now this is going to render out a whole new set of images from Nuke. So let's call this uh, Rendered Bullet uh, dot pound 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 dot tif. Okay, so Rendered Bullet dot pound 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 dot tif. And what that's going to do, I accidentally added a plus sign here, is it's going to render out all of the images from here, all these frames, it'll render them out like it did in Maya um, as this rendered bullet, as one big sequence, okay? And then we're going to hit render and then hit OK. Okay, so this is just going to zip through as quick as it did its initial playing, um, a little bit longer, it's going to do that. So while that's going, I'm going to open up After Effects And this works in, you know, After Effects CC or CS6, same process. All right, so now we're in After Effects. We're just going to double click and go to my desktop, D drive. 
images folder out from nuke and then here's our new sequence so we're just importing this uh, as a tiff sequence um, footage wonderful 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 bam okay uh, we're gonna ignore the alpha channel and hit okay and then we're just gonna take this drag it onto this new comp button hit oops not frame just zoom out I guess And here's our footage. So now we can just go to composition, add to render queue, click on the word lossless, go to format, QuickTime, format options, video codec, H264, okay. Uh, no audio, so we can just turn that, that's on auto, so it should be fine. Uh, rendered bullet, let's save this into The movies folder of our project sarcona <clears throat> underscore bullet underscore zero one okay so we know it's the very first bullet project i know whose it is whammo bammo save render and there we go a lot of rendering here but you, there's benefits to what that workflow is okay that's gonna be the same workflow we're gonna roll on each one of our assignments going from maya one into nuke do our processing and then over into After Effects. Okay, we could have done um, some of our work from After Effects, but just bringing in this initial EXR and then dropping out the new comp, you see it's already dark. I have to do some other stuff to set this up. I have to go here and say we have uh, 16 bits per channel. We're using uh, sRGB. We want to linearize the workspace. Uh, where's my footage? Right there. Let's go to interpret main color management sample cool file I guess it was that dark inside new too wasn't it before we did our color correction yeah um, and then we would add effects to this as well okay but there's other stuff we're gonna do inside nuke that I want to start getting you familiar with okay so do the process go through nuke lay it out here append your clips grade it write it out you can even save this in case you ever want to make changes. Uh, bullet comp. Uh, the cool thing about Nuke is, uh, the other cool thing, is let's say you have a new clip that you've done. I can just copy that, paste it here, so there's my new clip, and I can just pop that one in here. Okay, so there's my new clip. And then all the changes down the, down the uh, rivers and lakes will all trickle into that, okay? Very easy to do, very visual. We'll save that and close After Effects. Oops, I don't need to save that. All right, so then you're going to turn in uh, 50 work there movie. You're going to drop this into your turn in folder. Um, not your turn in folder, you're going to show me this video uh, and then I approve it. Then you'll drop it into the turn in folder on student. Okay. There's our first assignment. It seems like a lot, but um, it really is kind of just setting the foundation for all the other stuff we're going to be doing.